Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are looking at Azure Computing Services, starting with Azure Virtual Machines. So virtual machine is going to be the most common type of compute. Whenever you're launching a server, I would just think of a virtual machine. Uh, and your virtual machines could either uh, be running Windows or the Linux operating system. Now, the great thing with virtual machines is you get a lot of configurations. So you can choose your OS, the amount of memory, the amount of CPU, you can attach storage to it. Uh, the thing here is that because it's a virtual machine, the, uh, the hardware is shared with other customers. You can get dedicated, but generally it's shared. And then you get a virtual uh, computer. Um, so it seems like you have like 100% of the resource, okay? Then we have Azure Container Instances. So this I would describe as Docker as a service. You can run containerized apps. Probably runs Docker in both Windows containers, because I believe uh, Windows has containers as well. But uh, runs containerized apps on Azure without provisioning servers or VMs. So it makes that uh, a lot easier for you. The next sounds very similar, which is called Azure Kubernetes Service. So it's Kubernetes as a service. Uh, easy to deploy, manage, and scale containerized applications. Um, so the idea here is that Kubernetes is just, is just another uh, way of uh, working with containers, um, but it's using an open source library. Kubernetes has basically become the de facto for um, uh, containers. And so we've seen all the cloud providers uh, try to make their own service or orchestration service, but um, Kubernetes kind of won out. So you'll see it on all platforms. The next one is Azure Service Fabric. This one can be a bit confusing because it's described as many things, uh, but I'm going to describe it here as a tier one enterprise container as a service uh, application or um, a cloud service. So um, it's for distributed system platforms. It runs on uh, on the Azure cloud or on premise. Uh, and the way they described it is easy to package, deploy, and manage scalable and reliable microservices. And anytime you hear the word microservices, think of also containers. So with Azure Container Instances and Azure Kubernetes Services, that's where you'd also run microservices. Then we have Azure Functions. So uh, this would be event-driven, serverless compute. Uh, anytime we're talking about serverless compute, we're usually talking about serverless functions, which are uh, little bytes of code. Uh, that you can just um, upload and it just works. You don't have to think about the servers or provision anything. Uh, and you only pay for the time that that code runs. So serverless functions generally run for a very short duration. And as soon as they're done, those, uh, those underlying servers are shutting off. Uh, and the last on our list here is Azure Batch. So you can plan, schedule, and execute your batch compute uh, workloads across uh, 100 plus jobs in parallel. When I say jobs here, it's just the, the code that you want to run. Uh, you can use spot VMs. Spot VMs might not be out at the time of this, but it will be in the future. Um, but generally, it's known as low priority VMs. But the idea here is that there are uh, virtual machines that are being underutilized. And so Azure is allowing you to uh, 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 rent them at a more cost effective cost. And so if you're doing a lot of uh, scientific compute or other things, uh, and it doesn't matter if these uh, services get interrupted and you want to use those low priority VMs, that is a great way to save. And that is the computing services.